You've been up there? No, I just popped in to see that thing. But looks like somebody had it ordered. Yes, uh, we place an order. Some of these are just uh, not real orders, but in order for us to, to oh. you know, prioritize, we put a customer name on them. Okay, yeah. What? Welcome back, channel, everybody, and we're going to do a quick video on a subject that I was going to address in my last video, and I, I hesitated because I wanted to really think it through before I included it because I didn't put the guy on blast. I didn't put him on recording saying what he said to me in the dealership when I was looking at that 2023 Hellcat Red Eye jailbreak for 134000 and And I wanted to. I wanted to. So something in my life that drives me up the wall is when people lie to me because they think I'm stupid. When people lie to me with a lie that is so blatant, so absurd, that no one in their right mind with any intellect whatsoever would ever believe such a ridiculous lie, yet that person is so arrogant, so full of themselves, and so confident in the belief that they're smarter than me and all of you, that they say a blatant and absurd lie and expect me just to eat it up and go, okay, well, thank you for telling me that. It's believable. And here's what happened. When I was in the dealership, I asked the gentleman about the sticker. The sticker said, car especially built for, and I had a person's name on that sticker, meaning it was an ordered car. The car was ordered when orders opened at some point, and that order ultimately got delivered. Yet now that car is sitting there on the dealership floor and it's for sale with a $30,000 markup. It's been sitting there for 52 days and it's not sold. So I had to ask him, what happened? It looks like somebody ordered that car and backed out. And he said, no. And this is where the lie comes in. And this is where the he was either lying or he was lying scenario when when somebody puts you in a position where where whatever either way they have to be lying so if they're lying about this then that's bad but if they're lying about this if they're not lying about this then that means they lied about this so in this situation he says oh no they, nobody backed out we actually put orders in we did this a lot we put orders in under someone's name. It wasn't a real buyer just to speed up the production process and get the car here. Meaning that they believed, and this is probably true, that customer orders held priority over dealer orders. So to manipulate the system and basically hurt other customers' orders from being done faster, they put in straw buyers to get the orders in with the manufacturer and to get them built faster. But the joke is, the joke of this whole lie is, is the car's been sitting there for, I think yesterday it was 52 days, 53 days now, and it'll be sitting there for a lot longer, which makes this a classic hurry up and wait scenario. So we gotta get this car here to the point that we're gonna lie about a real buyer buying it, and then it's gonna sit here for several months unsold with a ridiculous price stuck on the sticker. And when I say he either lied or he lied, well, he's either lying to me about them doing that shady tactic, which I gotta say, if you admit that you did something shady openly to a perfect stranger, you are an idiot. By definition, if you look in the dictionary, there's a picture of this guy for saying that because he just admitted, yeah, we lied to manipulate the system to hurt other buyers who were legitimately ordering their cars and waiting for their cars so that we can get our own standing inventory here sooner so that we can raise the price by 30000 and let it sit here for almost two months, going on 50 53 or 54 days now, according to car gurus. Or he was lying about that 
and that car legitimately was ordered from a buyer and that buyer backed out. Well, if that buyer backed out, then they get stuck with that car. I'm assuming, and they have a $30,000 markup on that car, I'm assuming the reason that buyer backed out was the $30,000 markup. Now, certainly it could be anything, but this person went in, theoretically, put a deposit down, waited months for his specially built car to show up, fully loaded jailbreak red eye, and it showed up and he said, you know what? I'm not buying it. I changed my mind. I don't want it. And then they had to put it on the lot with a $30,000 markup, even knowing this buyer backed out, meaning they wouldn't come off of that markup for this buyer because they believe they can get it on the open market, sticking it on the showroom floor. Again, he's either lying about somebody ordering that car and backing out, or he's lying about um, them ordering the car with a fake name on it, or he lied, he lied all the way around. He lied, they lied to the manufacturer. So I don't know which to believe. Either way, I will tell you all, it benefits us because if the dealer's sitting there thinking, well, if I tell him that the guy backed out, he's gonna say, ooh, you got stuck with that car. Um, you should give it to me for a better deal. But if he says something like, well, we put somebody's fake name on the car and to get the car built faster, yet car guru shows that it showed up 53 days ago, you still look stupid because you guys lied to get a car built, to get it delivered so that it can sit on your dealership floor with a $30,000 markup. Now, I would almost understand them doing this if it was the second half of July where they were trying to outrun the the final order date of July 31st to get an order in to have a car built this year. But for a car to be there 52 days takes them well before July 31st arrival date when that car showed up, meaning this order was done way before, so there wasn't this urgency to get a car built or else they wouldn't get it built. Next, I want to address the United Auto Workers Union strike because a lot of you are are paranoid, extremely paranoid about that, and possibly for good reason. But I did some reading, and I'm not an expert on this stuff, but it appears that the demands of the UAW are significant. I mean, it looks like they're asking for a 47% increase in pay, a, a four-day work week, and pension plans reinstated, and it's some pretty big stuff, which definitely can create a, an impasse between between them to be able to get something agreed upon, which would make us believe that there is going to be a big impending auto worker strike that's going to stop production and then throw these cars back into scarcity and drive the prices to the moon. I'm going to stand by what I've been telling you all that I don't believe, I don't believe there's anything that could happen in the economy today that's going to make these cars suddenly skyrocket in value again interest rates are too high, the economy is too unstable, gas prices are too ridiculous, the impracticality of these cars is weighing, the looming belief that something is going to be announced in the next month or two as well. All these factors, I don't believe, lend themselves to these cars going up in value. But back to the UAW strike. The other, other part that I read is they've got, I think it's some 800 and something million dollars in strike pay reserves, meaning the money that they can pay, I believe it's about $500 a week they could pay to the workers while they're on strike so that they actually have money, so they can buy groceries and still have some semblance of a, of a, of a life and income. But that, then they predicted that it's about an 11 week exhaustion rate. If all the UAW goes on strike, that they've, they will burn through that 800 and something million dollars within about 11 weeks. That was not including the COBRA payments for their medical insurance. Adding that back in, I, they didn't say what they think that would cut it to, but I would think that would cut them down to probably eight weeks. It would probably cut them, cut them significantly, probably 25 to 30%, I would imagine, adding that back in. Let's just say it cuts it back from 11 weeks to 
nine weeks. Nine weeks is, you're looking at maybe about two, little over two months that things would be shut down. It's not the entire year, and I can promise you the strike would not last two months. My belief is if they did, they would do it strategically. They would do it for a few weeks, maybe a month, but somebody would give because the weight of this is too large. The losses start reaching into the billions for the automakers, and it starts to make more sense for the auto workers who are staring down the barrel of, of not having any, any strike pay to now start burning their own cash, which now forces everybody back to the table. So I'm confident that this is at some point gonna work it work itself out. When I hear that the demands are so far out there, meaning four day work week, 47% more in pay and, and, and pensions and all this other stuff, that I gotta think this is a this is one of the first volleys or they're playing some hardball, hoping that there's some middle ground. Because the art of negotiating, the number one strategy in negotiating is don't show all your cards at first, and then be willing to negotiate. And I will tell you, unions are historically proven to be willing to negotiate, and so are auto workers. It just takes some time. And I believe that in this situation, nobody wants this strike to happen, and they're probably gonna get this resolved. And if not, the strike wouldn't last so long that it would dramatically affect the market. I could be completely wrong. You can comment below and tell me I'm a complete idiot on this aspect of it, but I'm just not going to change my position that these cars cannot hold their value with markups. They can, I think they can at MSRP. Same thing's happening in real estate. Values aren't dropping, but they're not going up anymore. We're kind of just stagnated prices are holding and that's what it is now the super special house super special street with the grade up everything else that house might get a little more so you might get a little more for a, a red eye hellcat jailbreak in some cases or a king daytona or something but i still hold to that you should never pay any markups you should never pay for any add-ons that you should never get caught up in anything that the car sales people say to you because not a single one of them are economists or actual legitimate experienced business people and I don't have any problem with them because someday I want to go sell cars I think it'd be fun to sell cars I'd be an honest car salesman I'd know the car I'm selling I think it'd be fun when I'm when I'm retired to go do that because I think I'd do good at it so I, I think there's nothing wrong with that profession other than the lying and the deceit and the cheating and the thievery and the crap that we all have to deal with and the game playing I would like to see that industry get some more integrity bought to brought to it but I'll tell you don't give these people so much credit that they are economic geniuses that know that the car is going to go through the moon in value and they are convincing you of that because they are standing in this big beautiful shiny gorgeous building with marble floors and cars on the showroom this person doesn't know any more than you in a lot of cases you know more than them so don't fall for the baloney don't fall for the FOMO and don't fall for the lies because when you, when you have to lie, convince somebody of something, that means you are in a weakened position and you cannot justify what you're asking for something. So in this situation, the product is, if you have to lie about the product, lie about how you attain the product, lie about the scarcity of the product to try and get the price for that product, yet no matter how many months it sits, it doesn't sell, then you've already lost, you already lost the war. It's just a matter of, acknowledging it and throwing up the white flag which they're going to hold out as long as they can but we need to hold out as long as we can so with that everybody please like subscribe comment and i'll see you in the next one bye bye